everybody, my name is Angela Petrulli. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Riff Rundown with my friends at Fishman. Today's episode is pre-recorded, but don't worry, we're still gonna have a lot of fun. Today's lesson is going to be on Mrs. Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel, one of my favorite songs to play. There is something here for everybody. My beginners, my intermediates, and my advanced, don't worry, there's something cool. All of you guys are gonna learn today. Uh, so as always, if you guys are enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause a lot. And before we get started, folks, let me know where you're tuning in from and your favorite duo. You know, I always like to ask a question. So where you're tuning in from and your favorite duo, here is Mrs. Robinson. Really, really fun one. We're gonna be going over all the parts. There's some really cool licks and little guitar riffs that are happening uh, in the verses. We'll go through those. And there's this really neat little uh, seventh chord kind of outro thing. Seems really cool and organic. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk through that. So let's go ahead and get started at the intro. So the intro. Then you get a little more percussive with it, right? Really, really good stuff. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So this is all based around an E5 chord, right? It's a note that has E and B in it. And also too, I wanna to mention, I'm gonna be referring to all of the chords as if we did not have the capo. So this is relative to the capo, all of these chords. So we're gonna keep things really easy for you guys to follow along, okay? So what we're gonna do here, what I'd like you to do is this. Go ahead and play a regular E chord, okay? Where your first finger is on the first fret of the G string, respective to the capo, second finger, second fret of the A string, third finger, second fret of the D string, right? Your, your E chord. So E, G sharp, B, the one, three, five, the building blocks of that chord. Keep the hand like that, okay? We're gonna be basing this riff by lifting our second and third fingers around, okay? I don't want you to have to do separate things. We wanna keep this really, really stationary to this chord. I don't want you moving around a lot. Why expel that extra energy if you don't need to, okay? So we're gonna do here to start off the riff, keep your hand in the E chord position, open E string. Now, lift the second finger exposing the open A string and you're gonna hammer on, putting that second finger back to the second fret of the A string, so it'll sound like this. Okay. Now we go back to the open E string. Now lift your third finger up, open D string, back to the open E string, Place the second or the third finger now back on the second fret of that D string. That note would be E, respect to the capo. Okay, so the whole riff goes like this. Let's do that again, nice and slow. Now notice how I'm not getting percussive like I did at the top of the lesson. I want us getting the riff first, then we can start to add the fancy percussion, okay? But let's get the riff down. Let's do that one more time. One more time for good luck, why not? Now, 
Don't forget to alternate pick here. It's gonna feel a little bit easier to alternate pick once we start adding that kind of those percussion, those scrapes, right? Don't be scared of this. It's really, really cool. Take your time slow and steady. Like I say in all these lessons, we can't play anything fast, we can't play slow, okay? Now notice, once I start adding that strumming, particularly at the end of the riff, see how I'm getting a little bit more percussive, moving that wrist up and down, up and down, really helping us to get that alternate picking technique. So slow. Keep that hand stationary with that E chord. Just like that. Okay. So there's another little bit that he does where, where, where Paul Simon he kind of plays like half of that riff. Okay, so all that's happening there, open E. Strum the E5 chord, which is only, right, the B and the E, your second and third finger. Do the top three strings, E, A, G, or E, A, D. And you're going to do that twice. Open E, E5, open E, E5, lift, and then bring it back. alternate picking, keeping it moving, you can do it, all right? So here's the whole riff. I'm gonna play it a little slow. And if you need to give yourself a little gas first and just kind of strum it and then get into the riff, do it. And if you get that, that G sharp in there, it's all right, it's cool, because the bass does a really cool thing and hits the, the G sharp, so you can play it on guitar too. It's gonna sound great. Okay, let's do that again, riff. And that half riff. So after this point, we're gonna go ahead and play an E7, right? So those notes, to make an E7 chord, the formula would be one, three, five, flat seven, okay? Our flat seven here is gonna be this D note, again, relative to the capo. Place your pinky on the third fret of that B string. That is the D note. Keep the E chord where it is, folks. We're just adding that flat seven, okay? And we're gonna strum that. Just like that, down, 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 up, up, down, or up, down, up, okay? So let's go ahead now, adding that riff into the E7 chord, here we go. Half riff. E7. like that, right? We're building this momentum. It's really cool. The next chord is going to be an A7. It may, to some of you, look a little bit different. This I like to think of like as a bluesier way to play an A7 chord. I know one of my favorites, Stevie Ray Vaughan, would play his seventh chords like this. I think it's such a cool way to play it. So what you're going to do here, your first finger, we're only going to use two fingers here, your first finger and your third finger. Your first finger, place it across the second fret of the D string, G string, B string, E string. Your third finger is going to go on the third fret of the E string. This note here, that is your flat seven, that G note. That is what makes this an A7. We have A, C sharp, E, our one, three, five, flat seven, G here. Strum from the A string downward. It sounds pretty cool. Very different from this A7. I feel like this one's a little more spunky. It's got a little more character. I like this one a lot. If I could, when I'm playing live, I could ever get away with playing an A7 like this, I usually do. So that's what we're gonna do there. We're gonna play that version of the A7. So we have our E7, starting from E7 to A7. Let's go through that. Two, 
to our A7, drop that first finger. So right now, like we're in, you know, part of the verse here too, once we start really getting into that, that E7 chord, that A7 chord, even part of the riff previously, right? So we're, we're trading off. Right, some of that intro, some of that verse, same chords here. Okay, so we have that A7. Then we have a D major, D, F sharp, and A, first finger on the second fret of that G string, that note is A, third finger goes down on the D note, third fret of that B string, your second finger, second fret of the E string, F sharp, one, three, five, there they are. Okay, so we have that D chord there. Now, we go to a G chord, he's playing it like this with the open B string. So get your second finger on B, second fret of the A string. Third finger, your second finger is going to reach up on the third fret of that E string, that note is G. Place your third finger on the third fret of the E string, that note is G. Okay, so we're hitting our target notes, G, B, and D, they're all here. Now, you can play it this way, or some of you, if this is more comfortable, you can choose to play the chord this way with the pinky finger, okay? On that third fret of the E string, having the first finger free, second and third finger are playing the B and G respectively. So you do that too. So whatever's more comfortable for you. I kind of like this one, okay? That's the one I would choose. So we have that G like this. From there, we go to a C chord, okay? Reaching with that third finger, third fret of the A string, that note is C, second finger, is being placed on E, second fret of the D string, first finger goes down on C, first fret of that B string, strum everything except the low E string, we don't need it here, not invited to the party. Okay. Next chord here is going to be a C over B. What we're gonna do here, third finger lift, don't need it right now. Get that second finger up, placing it on the second fret of the A string, that note is B. It's a nice transitional chord, okay? It's strummed like that, strum it from the A string downward. Now from here, go ahead and play an A minor chord, but here's something I want you to do for me. Keep your first finger down, okay? That note is C. We also have a C note in A minor. Keep it there. Second finger goes down, second fret of that D string, that note is E. Third finger goes down on A, second fret of the G string, strum from the A string downward, like that. From here, we go to an E major. Guess what? E major looks just like this. Bring all of the notes up. With my students, I like to call it a spider crawl, right? Move each finger up a string. So your first finger should be on G sharp, first fret of that G string. Your second finger, second fret of the A string, that note is B. Your third finger is on E, second fret of the D string, strum everything. So in context, I know I, I buzzed through a bunch of chords here. In context, let's go ahead and hear this. So the order so far, E7, A7, D, G, C, C over B, A minor to E, okay? So here's what that's going to sound like. I'll play this a little bit slower and follow along. To our D chord, G, C, C over B, A minor, to E, okay? So for this ending part of the verse that goes into the chorus, I've seen this two different ways. You can hit a D7 and that's it. First finger on C, first fret of the B string, second finger, second fret G string is A, third finger on the F sharp, second fret of the E string. Strumming from the D string downward, you can do that. Or when I was watching Paul Simon on the um, Old Friends concert, I saw that he played a D major and then went to a quick C chord into the chorus. So that's what I saw. Both sound great, so you can do this. This is the option with D7. And 
and then you go to your chorus or the version that I saw Paul Simon do live, you could do this. D major to C. And then into the chorus. So I'm gonna let you choose what you like sonically a little bit better. Both work, uh, but I'll let you choose. I know when I play it, I like to play it like Paul Simon, so I do the D to C. All right, so let's hear that in context with the riff. I'm gonna run it through once and then we're gonna go ahead and look at the chorus. Okay, so here we go. Half of the riff. E7. So now we get into the chorus. The chorus sounds like this. So the chords here, we have G, same one with the open B string, to an E minor. So the notes here in this E minor, E, G, B, one, flat three, five, that's the formula for a minor chord. Okay, your first finger is out. We're not gonna need it. Second finger on the second fret of the A string, that note is B, your third finger is on E, second fret of the D string, strum everything. We go back to G to E minor. Then to our C chord, to D, and a quick C chord. Down, up, down, up, back into G. And we repeat this again, G to E minor, G to E minor, C to D. Then after that D chord, we have another C chord. We go to an A minor from here. So use that first finger as that pivot. From there, the riff. All right, so that's what's happening there. So now that we get back to the second verse, what I'd like to do here is talk about those verse, those riffs that are happening, okay? So there's three of them. Again, I'm gonna do my best to my ear when I was listening to these, because again, the guitars are really, really layered on the song, which is really, really cool. So here are a couple riffs that I'm gonna give you. And again, feel free to elaborate on them and make them your own too. They're really fun, kind of bluesy and really cool. So here's the first one. We hear this at 13 seconds. So let's talk about it. So first finger placing that on the second fret of the G string, that note is A. Hammer on with your third finger to that B note, fourth fret of the G string. First finger goes down on the third fret of the B string, that note is D. And give me a lighter hammer on, nothing too crazy. On that fifth fret of the B string, that note is E. So it's gonna sound like this. And again, alternate picking, folks. Now, the last bit of this riff, get your third finger, placing that on the fourth fret of that E string. That would be a G sharp, again, relative to the capo. To that F sharp, second fret of the E string open E string. So the whole thing's gonna sound like this. See how they're pull-offs? Notice how I'm not plucking every note. OK, 
Okay, and again, I'm moving my hands so you can see that I'm not strumming it. Let those pull-offs give you that energy to, to play the rest of the notes. Just like that. Now, once we get to that A7, right, We're strumming that, sounding good, there's this other riff that happens at 21 seconds. It goes like this. It's a really fun little riff, and it's the same on all these strings. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Open A string, and we're going to be only using our first finger for this riff. Open A string, hammer on to the second fret B. Open D string, hammer on to E, second fret. Open G string, hammer on second fret of the G string, note is A. So it sounds like this. Again, alternate picking. Don't get lazy on this. It's gonna sound better if you do it. Just like that. It's a great little easy riff. It's a lot of fun. So just like that. So let's look at that main riff. Right? We hear it in there. It's really cool. So. Into the D chord. Pretty rad stuff. So again, work with the timing of it. If you can do both, this is great. If it's a little too much to do these riffs and play the chords in time, no problem. Make a friend who plays guitar and you guys can play these songs together. Because there's nothing more fun than playing guitar with someone else. It's really, really great. So, the third riff which is my personal favorite because it's very bluesy and fun. It's a good one. And when in the Old Friends concert, you should check it out on YouTube, this happened at the 39 minute mark and he does it a lot. And you can tell that Paul really likes to play this too and how they kind of sit back the band so that this bit really, really shines through. Um, this is played over that A minor chord. So let's talk about how to do this. Third and fourth finger are going to be used for the first part. So get your third finger, place that on the seventh fret, again, in accordance to the capo, seventh fret of the G string, your pinky finger is going to be placed on the seventh fret of the B string. So I like to hybrid pick this. I like to pinch it. So the pick, place it on the G string, your middle finger, squeezing upwards. Don't squeeze too, too hard on that string. Squeezing upwards on that B string. So. You're gonna give this a little half step bend and bring it back, just like that. And if you need to hook your thumb over to let this bend be a little clear, do it. So we bend up and we bring it on back. Now, place your first finger now in accordance to the capo, fifth fret of the G string, fifth fret of the B string. Just like that. Now, with your third finger and fourth finger here, third finger, seventh fret of the D string. So that note right there, okay? Pinky finger, seventh fret of the G string. It's gonna sound like that, okay? So. First finger, seventh fret, or fifth fret fifth fret of the D string. Lots of fives and sevens today, folks. So there we go. Then that leads, so that, that space, right? The A minor to the E, that's where this, this little riff lives. It's really, really cool. So I will go ahead and go through this a little bit slowly a couple times, and then I'll give you context with playing it with the chords together. Okay, so here it is. Let's do that one more time and then I'll give you context. So here's a little context with some of the chords from the chorus. It's 
do that again. For my advanced students, my intermediates, try this out. It's a lot of fun. Let's do that one more time. licks it's really fun so those are the three main ones now there's different variations if you listen back to a live version of them playing this you hear the, the version that's on bookends right you'll hear that there's different variations but man are these riffs just super super fun to play so for the outro we've got this kind of cool seventh chord thing again I'm doing my best to, to decipher what's happening here. Because again, there's so many different guitar layers and, and, and parts. But from what I can hear, it's something like this. It's something like that at the end. Now, if you just wanted to hang on that E7 the whole time, how it does like that, that fade out, and do the E7, it's cool. But yeah, there's this other layer of these seventh chords, which I think are just so cool. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So we have our E7 here. Now I'm doing some hybrid picking with this. The E7 that I am hearing is with the first finger on the G sharp, first fret of the G string, and your second finger on the B note, second fret of that A string. You're hitting that E with your pick, and you're getting your second finger and your third finger plucking upwards from the G string and you're also striking the D string and A string as well. So E note chord, E note chord. So what's happening there? We're getting that second finger, or the third finger placing it on the second fret of that G string, that A note. From there, we go to a B7, but we're not gonna play the full thing with the F sharp here, okay? So we're getting that second finger, placing that on the second fret of the A string, first finger, second first fret of that D string, the D sharp, and then your second, third finger on the second fret, the G string. So hit the B note. And again, striking in the same way with that hybrid picking. Just like that. To my ear, I think it's pretty close. So again, outro. And this is at the three minute 34 second mark. And that repeats to the B7. Again, something like that. Have fun, listen to it. It's uh, again, this is a great song. Folks, that's it. We did it. That is Mrs. Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. Such a fun tune to play, really fun to play with other people too. So get a friend who plays guitar and you guys can jam on this together, who knows? Sing some harmonies over it, it's always a cool thing. So again, it is always such a blast hanging out with you guys. If you wanna check out more about the cool Fishman gear that I use in these lessons, be sure to click the link in the video description. And as always, be sure to give me a follow and subscribe to the channel, it helps the cause indeed. Um, this is such a great tune and again, as always, Wishing you all so much success in your musical journey. It is such a blast to do these week after week. Uh, I will be back live next week with a brand new episode. So everybody take good care, happy playing, and we'll see you guys next week.